First Presbyterian Church of Glasgow, Kentucky. Today is August 23rd, the year 2020. On our church calendar, this is our 12th Sunday after Pentecost. Welcome one and all to our worship service today. If you, and as you view at home this service, we do welcome you to this viewership. Also want to let you know that we are having in-person worship also at 11 o'clock. So if you would like to come in person, uh, please do. We're here at 11. If you'd rather watch from home, that's fine too. We'll continue doing both services, this recorded service and the live service for the next few months. So welcome to everyone this Sunday morning. Announcements to call to your attention first. As I have been saying, if you do view this service on YouTube, you'll need a bulletin or a bulletin will help to follow along. If you're not getting this by email or mail and want to receive a bulletin, just let the church office know. We're happy to add you to our email list. We will have a um, continuation of our book study Wednesday. So those of you in the Bible study know about that. That will continue on Wednesday. And I do believe that concludes our announcements for this morning. So at this time, let us all please worship God together. starting back soon yeah um, September 28th is when we actually go back but um, uh, August 25th is whenever we go back online online virtual study yep interesting well we're thrilled to have you here today we appreciate you joining us let's have our call to worship all right wash yourselves make yourself clean remove your remove the evil from your doings and before my eyes cease to do evil Learn to do good, seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, 
you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Let us praise God. time this morning as a people that know full well that we have done wrong. We don't need others to point it out to us in our hearts. We can recognize it. We're sinful people, but the good news is that no matter what we have done wrong, by the grace of God and by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we can live as forgiven people. And so with that, please hear this call to worship. Come to the Lord, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and he will give you rest. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. In his mercy, let us pray together our prayer of confession. Almighty God, we do not like to see ourselves as strangers and foreigners. We want to be part of the insiders in friendship. Sometimes we figure we are too weak to compete with others who want to stand out. Too often we make our judgments on important matters based on how well we are viewed by people we hardly know. Forgive our nearsighted view of life. Teach us to think in generations rather than seasons. Guide us to have faith that we are always safe in your love and in your steadfast presence. Let's now pause a moment to offer to God our silent personal prayers of confession. Amen. Friends, hear, receive, believe this assurance of pardon Jesus knows our every weakness and loves us still. We awaken to the promise of Christ's amazing grace. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven.
come to our prayer time this morning as the people of God, we'll conclude our prayer time with the Lord's Prayer. One reason why I encourage all of you to receive our bulletin if you're not getting it is that our bulletin contains the newest and most recent prayer list. We want to pray for our prayer list this morning. We'll also uh, pray for our joys, the celebrations of life. This week on our birthday list, we have one birthday on the 28th. Priscilla is having a birthday. So on the 28th, Priscilla, happy birthday to you this upcoming week. We'll also conclude the prayer time together with the Lord's Prayer. And so with that, let's now come to God and share with the Lord and with one another what's on our hearts and minds this morning. Let us pray together. We thank you, Lord God, for this beautiful day that you've made. Once again, a wonderful day to worship and praise your name. We're so delighted that we have the freedom to come to you at any moment's notice. All we have to do is not just say the word, but think the word. And you hear it. You receive our prayers. You respond to our prayers. You're active in our life. You're always present all around us, even within us. You envelop us in your care. There's no place we could go to escape your love. And so as confident people, people confident in your presence and in your love, we come to you with what's on our hearts. Our hearts oftentimes can be made very heavy by the world around us. The world would love to give us calamity and distress and bad news. But we face these calamities with you by our side, with you walking with us. And so now we give to you our concerns from the world and ask for your help with them. We pray today for Eleanor and for Bob and David and Miranda's mother, Linda, for Vern and Vern's sister, Margaret, and Michael's grandfather, Glenn, for the concerns we've not mentioned, for the concerns that are present but not on our prayer list, we give those to you as well right now. We trust that you'll be with them in a special way. And Lord God, we also, though, cannot end a prayer time without sharing our words of gratitude with you, our thanksgiving. You're good to us. You bless us with family and friends. You give us bonds of love with one another. You give us reasons to celebrate. And we celebrate this week with Priscilla on her birthday. You give us so much. You give us plenty. But the greatest gift you've given us overall is the gift of the friendship we have with your son, Jesus Christ. For indeed, he's our role model. He's the one we want to emulate. And he's the one who taught us to pray this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, hello there, Anne. How are you today? I'm good. Good. Have a nice, restful summer. Mm -hmm. Plenty of sleep. Yeah. Good. Me too. But glad to see you back again with us, and you're very kind to come and share with us the Old Testament reading. I think you're reading 
Psalm 124. And uh, I'll read along with you. So whenever you're ready, take it away. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us up alive when their anger was kindled against us. Then the flood would have swept, swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us. Then over us would have gone the raging waters. Blessed be the Lord, who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped as a bird from the, from the snare of, fowl, of the fowl, fowlers. The snare is broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Anne. We come to our message this morning. We're going to return back to Romans. This is Paul's letter to Christian colleagues of his in Rome. We read a bit of Romans about a month ago. If you'll remember, we read then about how Paul talks about that we as people of Jesus Christ, we're victorious, or as Paul puts it, we're more than conquerors. And he reminded us in what we read last month, that there's nothing in this world or outside this world that will ever separate us from God's love. Now, we're going to return back to Romans this Sunday and next Sunday in Romans chapter 12. Next Sunday is a longer passage, but today is very short. It's just two verses. And so let's just go ahead and get to it now. It's Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. And I'll join you there in our pew Bible. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Okay? I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Now today we're going to focus on verse 2, and since it's a short reading, I want to read a second time verse 2, then we'll talk about it in some more detail. Paul writes, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I read Paul's words here, and here in verse 2, I'm reminded that when he says, do not be conformed to the world, that the world that we live in, this physical plane that we exist in, has a certain way of doing things, a certain way that the world works, right? This world also contains sin, and it also contains a lot of evil, and it has its own rules that it operates by. For example, rules like this. When you get on an elevator, you have to face the door, right? Unspoken rule. That's the way the world works. Or if you drive the interstate, you're supposed to pass on the left side of the car, not the right, or most times anyway, on the left. The world tells us that you work nine to five. So see, the world has a certain set of rules that it operates by. But the world also has a way of putting us in a routine the world has a way of making us conform to it. The world has a way of putting us in a rut. In fact, the sermon title today is Being in a Rut. And the world we live in can seduce us to do that, to have the same routine, the same habits, being in a rut. 
We conform to the world without even knowing it so often. But remember, yes, we live in the world. But as people of Jesus Christ, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. That's why Paul reminds us here in this passage to not conform to the ways of the world. But we do so often. It's, it's hard to, to not to a lot of times because we live in the world. We pick up the world's bad habits. We pick up the world's sinfulness. We pick up the world's ways of doing things and make them ours. Paul says, be on guard. Do not conform to the ways of the world. But not just us as people. Even, uh, even churches oftentimes can get into a rut or a routine or get into a um, uh, habits that the world gives us it's easy to have happen in church too as it is in our personal life because in church made up of us right the things we do outside the building we do inside the building if we're in a rut or in a routine or conform to the world outside these four walls we're going to do it inside as well Every uh, Easter, if you notice, a lot of churches will have a special program during Holy Week called the Seven Last Words of Jesus. You may have been to a program such as that. The Seven Last Words of Jesus were the words that Jesus spoke on the cross, right? But there's a different set of seven words that I want to talk to you now for a minute, and that is the seven last words of a dying church. The seven last words of a dying church, you may have heard this one too before, but here it is. The seven last words of a dying church is, are, we've never done it that way before. We've never done it that way before because churches can get into a habit, into a routine, and be lulled to sleep, to get into a rut, just like we can personally. Paul says, don't let the world do that to you. Don't be conformed to it. There's a better path that he talks about. For Paul says this, don't be conformed to the world, but instead be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. We're not designed to be people that are stuck in a rut by the world. We're not designed to be people that are just people of routine or rote activity. We are people that are designed to be transformed into something new, to evolve, to grow by the renewal of our minds. We're designed to be people who strive in our own life to be more like Jesus each and every day. So we evolve, we're transformed. We don't let the world put us into a rut or a routine we can't get out of. We don't wanna be the same person today that we were yesterday, we don't. We wanna be a better version of ourselves. We wanna be evolving always, not stuck, not in a rut, not stuck in a routine but transforming ourselves. You know, when my uh, mom would tell me when I was a boy growing up, she said it a thousand times, that she says, son, you got a brain, use it, right? And Paul is telling us very similar. People, you've got a mind, use it. Let it transform you, evolve you into something better than you are today. Don't be conformed to the world standards. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Become more like Christ and strive for that. Don't be stuck in a rut. The world will put you in it very quickly if you let it. You know, I was thinking about uh, uh, those of you who are fans of University of Kentucky basketball will know the name Pat Riley, right? Pat Riley uh, played for Adolph Rupp. He played at UK. Uh, I think Pat Riley was actually the SEC player of the year when he was at, at, at college. 
So, UK fans, you know the name, Pat Riley. I heard Pat Riley say one time in an interview that in his life, he tries to reinvent himself every 10 years. Every 10 years, he wants to reinvent himself. And if you look at his career, he's done that, kind of. You know, for a decade, he played basketball. Then, for a decade, he coached uh, the Los Angeles Lakers. Showtime, Magic Johnson. Then, for a decade or so, he coached the New York Knicks. The whole different style of basketball. Then, now, he's in uh, the front office doing different kinds of work. See, every decade, he says, he tries to reinvent himself, to evolve into something better. And that's the same message that Paul is giving us today as people of Jesus Christ. To be something better this decade than last decade. To evolve into something more spiritual, more holy, the next 10 years than the previous 10 years. To reinvent ourselves. But the world won't like it. The world tries to keep us into routine. Tries to keep us in a rut tries to keep us on its schedule, but don't let it be transformed by the renewal of your mind, evolve into something more holy. But why is that important? What's the purpose in doing that? Uh, what's in it for me, right? Paul tells us that too, for Paul goes on to say this in that verse two, our motivation for evolving, for transforming ourselves, to always try to be better today than we were yesterday, is this, we do so, so that you may prove what is the will of God. We do so to seek to prove the will of God. When we follow the will of God and not the ways of the world, that is a process of evolution and growing spiritually. It's a process of transformation. And Paul tells us here that as we go through our lives, when we seek what is good, what is acceptable, and what is perfect, when we seek those things, then we're being transformed by the renewal of our minds. I look at it sort of like this. Um, you know sometimes that a uh, mule or a horse will be led because you dangle a carrot in front of it and it's always walking after the carrot. Well, likewise, as we journey through our life, there's a carrot dangled in front of us. And that is to do the will of God, to do what is good, what is acceptable, what is perfect. We chase after those things. And when we do so, the world never has a chance to put us into a rut. You know, friends, we ask ourselves, I think, uh, a question. And the question is, as we sit here today, are we better people than we were 10 years ago? I think there has to be no worse feeling than to wake up one day and say, you know, I'm the exact same person today as I was 50 years ago, or 25 or 10. We're designed to be people that are evolving to be more like Christ, to chase after the good, to chase after the acceptable, the perfect. We'll never be perfect, but we strive for it. We wanna be able to say to ourselves that 10 years ago to now, I can see a difference. I am more generous. I am more spiritual. I am more gracious. I am more patient. I am more loving. As we look back on our years, those are the things we want to say to ourselves. That we have evolved into somebody more like Christ. If you had these characteristics now that we never had then, 
and didn't have then. But also we ask ourselves this question. How about the next 10 years or the next 20? We continue to strive to be transformed into different people day by day, decade by decade. As we go forth in our life, chasing that carrot of what is good, what's acceptable, and what is perfect. Chasing after the will of God. And friends, as we go through our lives, may we take a little bit from Pat Riley and remember that it's okay every 10 years or so to become a new person, to transform yourself, to be renewed. Go forth today. Don't be conformed to the world. Go forth today. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind and seek the will of God. Let us pray together. We thank you, Lord, for this day, for these words of wisdom from the Apostle Paul, for the truth that we should not be conformed to this world. This world does not have our best interest in mind. But instead, we seek to rise above the ruts and the routines of the world to be transformed through the, through the renewal of our minds as we chase after the things that are glorious and good. Give us the wisdom we need to say that today and tomorrow and every day, We'll always be striving to be better versions of ourselves. And we do that for Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Please hear this affirmation of faith this morning, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I just want to say a word uh, before our final hymn about offerings. If you do happen to come in person on Sunday, that we'll have a offering tray in the back pew to receive any offerings. Also, as you watch online, if you would like to visit our website, www.glasgowpresbyterian.com, there is a um, pay or give now button you can click on our homepage. So just be aware of those. And at this time, we'll have our closing hymn this morning. today. Have a blessed day. Have a great day. Enjoy the world around you, but don't be conformed to, to it. Be on guard that we not fall into routines or ruts that the world gives us. Instead, take Paul's advice. Be transformed, evolve spiritually by the renewal of your mind. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you this day and always. Mm -hmm.